Hi everyone and welcome to Sugar Spice Nice. My name is Shweta and in this video I have just gotten to Coimbatore. checking into my hotel i'm staying for just one night here at the vivanta the team was really sweet we asked for an early check in and they gave it to us like couple of hours early instantly what hit me in this room is that there's like so much of open space these are the two twin beds and this here is a study desk and also this lamp you can actually turn it for adjusting how much light you want here there's a tv and here actually there's like space to keep your luggage and stuff i'm still waiting for my luggage to come up and here we have the mini bar and the kettle and here is the wardrobe with a safe and some hanging space and here right next to the entrance is the bathroom so there's a separate shower cubicle and a toilet area i do feel like overall this is a bit more spacious than some of the other hotels that i've stayed in recently quickly going to be seeing what view i have nice it's a garden view room of sorts seems pretty nice and green and there's also this like little cute sit out really cozy to sit by the window and have chai Coimbatore is actually known as the city of temples. There are so many temples in the city and a little bit away from the city. And right behind me is the Kari Varadaraja Perumal Temple. And this one actually just shut down when I got here to visit. So I'm going to be moving to the next place now. The next cool thing to do in Coimbatore is explore the local cuisine which is something that I've been so looking forward to and I am exploring only like legit legendary places over here Sri Annapurna where I'm standing at right now is one of the legendary ones one of the oldest and the most popular vegetarian restaurants in the city and don't take my word for it you can actually see the amount of waiting So there is a concept of sharing tables and right now we are lucky there's nobody else yet on this table but you have to be prepared for sitting with others so i tried to read the reviews for what is famous over here and i read that dosa is famous and so i asked the staff also over here and they recommended the ghee masala dosa so i'm having that and i've also ordered a vada sambar the menu is actually in both languages so there's the regional section and then there's the english section they have everything right from biryani to like sabzis to dosas and stuff idli is not available right now which i'm a little disappointed with but it's okay now my order is here and the first thing that's come is the vadai sambar vada sambar or vadai sambar i don't know how they pronounce it here but i hope i got something right i'm normally not the biggest fan of vada sambar but they insisted that i try so i didn't mind it this is a single vadai it comes dunk inside the sambar when i took the first bite to taste it i was blown away firstly the texture of the vadai it was amazing and the taste of the sambar it had that little bit of sweetish after taste and it was slightly thicker than regular sambar but so tasty even the chutney very light a little bit more coconutty not too heavy on tempering excellent flavor then came the hero of this meal this is the ghee masala dosa one of the most famous items on the menu of course recommended by them and you can see the glaze of ghee on the top inside is the masala and you get it with three chutneys and one sambar one is the regular white coconut chutney one is a green chutney it's kind of mixed uh, coconut and a lot more coriander and chilies third one is a tomato chutney now the masala in this is extremely soft and kind of spread out throughout the dosa it's got a tempering of curry leaves urad dal chana dal also a little bit of onion a hint of tomatoes and a little bit of grated carrot as well and i feel like the tomatoes give a little bit of sour taste to the masala but overall this was such a delight to have it was crispy in the beginning but as it got slightly cool it became softer but still so enjoyable and the taste of ghee wasn't overpowering but you could of course feel it in every bite even price wise i think it's a really economical place i saw a lot of tables actually enjoying their full meals and some i was not in the mood for a full meal but maybe another time i should try that here 
If there's one thing that I don't want to leave Coimbatore without, that is buying a silk sari. Now there are so many silk sari shops here, and the place is actually famous for its handlooms as well. Apart from silk, even cotton, a particular kind of cotton, you know, those soft cotton towels, the thin ones, even they are really famous here. But right now I'm in this like busy market area, which is called Crosscut Road. So even the restaurant that I went to for lunch was right here, and uh, behind me is a big shop called the Chennai Silks. So I'm going to be going inside and looking for some nice silk sarees. I don't think I've ever seen a shop for sarees this. Big. I mean, two floors or maybe more of silk sarees, different kinds of silk, cotton silk, Kanchipuram silk, softer silk. I don't even know what the varieties are called, but you'll find it all here. And the ground floor level is actually just different kinds of cotton sarees, different patterns, varieties, designs. And I went up to the first floor to actually look for a good silk saree. I didn't want to look for something too heavy, so here are the kind of things that I'm looking for. But since this entire shopping experience has been so overwhelming and borderline. Happiness inducing. I'm going to take you through the whole entire process. In terms of designs and patterns, I think I haven't seen this kind whenever I've gone silk sari shopping in Mumbai. So, so definitely the colors, the weave does feel very, very different here. And this is the one that I picked up for myself. I was obsessed with this color combination. Let me know what you guys think. I'm going to leave the price of it on the screen. I think it was pretty reasonably priced. Sari. There are actually two or three more shops here which I now cannot stop myself. I am going to go look there. So I just went inside. I don't know what kind of a shop. It was such a different experience here. So this is Sri Devi Silks on that same street. And here again, there are a whole bunch of sarees. I feel like this one is a little bit more budget friendly. The whole store is actually big. They have towels and other cotton stuff as well. There was this one section which was literally clearance, and there were sarees for like 800 rupees, 1000 rupees, 1200 rupees. And I found this yellow gold one. It's got this woven work all over, and it's a really heavy, rich looking saree. Even the color is really, really beautiful. This one costs 930 rupees, and when I I saw the price, I was like, what? I mean, these people are making me or what happened? I don't know. So I just made her open the entire sari to make sure it's proper and I didn't visibly find any defects, so I took it. I think it looks really pretty. The yellow one is actually a tissue silk sari and then there's this other one. This is a semi-soft silk. It's a combination of uh, emerald to bottle green and purple and again, a very, very beautiful design. This one also cost 800 or 900 rupees and my final bill after discount was almost 1600 rupees for two sari. Both of them fairly heavy and I was like wow and here I have my sarees from Sri Devi Silk. The next shop is a place called Mahavir's. Now this one is a 50 year old shop here. This one was the one which was recommended to me by the people at the hotel. So I thought I'll check it out. Now Mahavir's feels a little bit more organized than the other shops here. There's no like sales or clearance counter here, but very sweet staff who actually show you as per the price range that you're looking for. So the price range that I told them was about under 5,000, under 6,000. And I saw so much variety here. In fact, I liked a few heavier ones also, which were for about 20,000, but that was just out of my budget. But they were really really pretty. The collection that I saw here was different than the other stores. I felt it was a little bit more refined. Even the fabric felt better. The designs were a bit more subtle. Overall, it's a different kind of experience shopping here versus the other two stores that I went to. So I think if you're looking for a little bit more luxurious, a little bit richer sari, then Mahavir's is better. But if you want a good bargain, then the other two shops are for you. I honestly don't believe I ended up shopping these many silk saris here. But I think the variety that I saw here, the range that I saw here, the design Designs. They were all so pretty. I can't wait to wear these. Let me know if you'd like to see me wear these in any video. I don't think I will, but still. There is one temple which I really want to visit. Let's see if we can make it there. Yeah. 
The temple behind me is known as Arulmigu Mundi Vinayagar Temple, Kulyakulam. And this one is actually famous as one of the biggest or probably the biggest Ganesha idols in all of Asia. Of course, I'm not going to be able to film properly inside, but I can definitely give you guys a glimpse of the magnificence of this idol from here. The idol here is about 20 feet tall and over 11 feet broad. And it's actually sculpted from a single massive rock by about 21 highly skilled workers. The eyes of the Murti are truly majestic and one can definitely feel the good vibrations the minute you enter the temple. Mm. And the next stop is one place which I didn't want to leave Coimbatore without that is visiting the Sri Ayappan temple. This is located at Siddhapudur in Coimbatore and it is one of the most prominent temples not just here but in the whole of Tamil Nadu. It is constructed in a typical traditional style of architecture. It has been built on the same lines as the original Sabari Mala temple in Kerala and it is actually regarded as the second Sabari Mala which is why during November to January period the temple is extremely crowded. The temple is believed to be established in the mid 20th century and is still one of the most important places of worship here. The next place that I'm going to is called Sri Anandas. Now this is the other legendary famous vegetarian restaurant here and let's go inside and see what the fuss is all about. right now actually and I wasn't sure if I'm gonna get idlis or not but they did have idli. One thing here the staff told me that if you're ordering idli you'll get idli and sambar separately but if you're ordering idli sambar then you'll get idli dipped inside the sambar. Even the prices are different. Dipped is a little bit more but lesser sambar is priced differently. So I've ordered myself a plate of idlis and they look like cotton. They look so soft. I'm bringing a bite now and I'm actually realizing they're probably even more softer than I think they are. Yes. These have hit my soul they're so good the idli itself i mean i don't think i can explain to you just how soft they are fluffy spongy they also given a little bit of kodi on the side i think it's in ghee or oil i don't know so good the coconut chutney here has quite a bit of hotness to it so there's a fair bit of chili inside tempering doesn't taste too heavy there's not too much of flavor of coconut oil in it it's just coconut and a lot of chili the next thing that i've ordered is from their specials it is kela bhajia so actual bhajia is made out of banana and let's just see how it is from inside. There are two big ones in a plate. I don't think I've eaten anything like this before. The chutney is adding a nice spice to it. The covering is not just gram flour. I feel like it's a mix with something else. I feel like a banana bhajia actually made from a whole raw banana. Like they're not peeled but they're just put through the vertical slicer. Now here we have bonda. So these are actually really similar to Mangalore buns in terms of taste. It does have a sweet taste. Right now it's a little bit cold but when they would have been piping hot, this would have been young. I think for me, between this and Sri Annapurna, I think I'll have to pick Sri Annapurna. Although what I ate here was lovely, I just feel the overall taste and flavor of the food, Sri Annapurna kind of wins a little bit for me. Now this here is the Lakshmi Mills compound and here there is one of the most recent attractions of Coimbatore. It is called the Lulu Hypermarket. Before going inside, I'm just going to be stopping by this temple. This is such a nice cute temple. They've tried to give it that Kerala feel as well. Now this is Lulu Hypermarket. It is a hypermarket so saying that it is huge is like stating the obvious. But this one is a popular chain from the Middle East. I've been to the one in UAE in Dubai and even over there it is a stop for great deals. So here you can see it is a Sunday today and the kind of crowd that we have. But since it is a really nice big wide space, I feel like it's not looking overly crowded. You can find everything here and by everything I literally mean everything from electronics to sports goods to home goods, personal care, beauty, luggage, fresh produce, meats, cheese, 
other dairy there's so much over here in fact the food section is something that really caught my eye especially the cooked food section so here is an entire area where you have non vegetarian food so right from full meals to finger food to smaller things like appetizers and this one is for the vegetarian section then there's an entire section dedicated to gourmet food so different kinds of cheese olives uh, fancy pickles oils all of these are also here in fact i feel like i haven't seen so much variety in things even in mumbai then there's an entire section for baked goods so different types of bread and further in the bakery section there's also dessert so here you can see there's a distinction between the pastries which have egg and those that don't and i feel like there's enough and more variety on both sides so i ended up picking up two desserts to enjoy in my hotel room so one is a japanese cheesecake this cost about 99 rupees and the other is the black forest pastry this cost 90 rupees for me i love shopping in a hypermarket but the one thing that i don't like about it is the checkout queues oh my god there were at least 20 something counters here but each one of them was packed four people five people waiting in queue to get their orders cashed So now I'm all changed and I'm ready to grab a quick bite because whatever we ate earlier was much much earlier in the day and it was also quite light. So here firstly we have a tray full of compliments from the team at Vivanta. There's some cashews, some almonds, some fruit, some cookies and always very grateful for that. And then I actually ordered soup in the room. So this one is for my team member and this one is for me. I'm having the cream of tomato soup and they've also sent some bread rolls with it which I'm going to be enjoying with a little bit of butter. Thank God I have this dessert to cheer me up because let me tell you guys on the way back I had the hardest time figuring out an Ola. Rest of the day I actually had a private vehicle at my discretion but then the time duration of the driver and the vehicle was done so I had to figure out booking an Ola and here all of the Ola drivers want to charge you extra money over and above the Ola billing. So Ola if you're listening to this please take stock of the situation in Coimbatore where no Ola driver wants to take a ride which is about 100 rupees. They want to charge every every customer an additional of 30 or 50 rupees and that is apparently to recover their service charge then coming to the other difficulty that happened after all of this i finally found an auto ride and the auto guy refused to accept coins he said that 10 rupee and 20 rupee coins apparently don't work in coimbatore and i was aghast when i heard that i mean are you in india or not thankfully i have all of this dessert to cheer me up actually all of it is not mine this one is a japanese cheesecake i want to show you guys how it looks Ooh, it's that fluffy one. Looks really nice and fresh. And here is my dessert, a black forest pastry. This one's actually quite massive. You know the dessert counter at Lulu looked so good. It was tough to pick one. So whenever that happens, I always stick to old favorites. Not bad. So this was the whole point of eating a light dinner that I could enjoy this pastry. After a long time in a breakfast, I'm actually able to see everything that I personally start my morning with. So that's dry fruits, there's walnuts, almonds, and there's dates, and there's also seeds, watermelon seeds, flax seeds, sunflower seeds, and I've got an assortment of fruit as well. So this is course one, and this here is something that was called as detox water. There, let's try it. Seriously, can't figure for the life of me what this is. Feeling good though. Before I actually eat anything else, let me take you through the whole entire spread. So this entire section that we have is actually the cereals and dried fruits and nuts. So here there is a variety of almonds, seeds, cashews, walnuts, flax seeds and this is all of the different types of cereal. And here we have some cut fruits, milk, granola, yogurt and here we have different varieties of cheese. Here we have cold cuts and fresh salad. So here we have two live counters. Behind me is the Ramasari idli counter and here is the puri bhaji and the pancake counter. 
I think one of the most unique things about this buffet is the fact that they actually have a filter right here. So you can pour out your coffee. Even for tea lovers, there's like a ready tea masala which you can just mix with your tea and also add some elaichi while the tea seeps in to get that added flavor. Now this section here has the other English breakfast items. So grilled potatoes, veggies and even more non-vegetarian dishes. And here is all of the hot dishes. There's hakka noodles, parathas and stuff. But dishes that really took my mind away are the local specialities. So there's idlis, then there's vadai and punnugulu. We have upma. We also have pongal, which is something that I don't see very very often in breakfast. And then there's sambar and also a potato sabzi along with more chutneys and stuff. We have the bread counter for various assorted breads, bread rolls, sliced bread, and of course there's things to go with it like butter, jam, etc. Here we actually have all of the patisserie section, so the dry cakes, muffins, donuts, croissants. So now actually I'm heading towards the kitchen because uh, the chef actually said that they have a local speciality here called the Ramasari Idli and I've never tasted that ever in my entire life and you guys know what an Idli enthusiast I am. This Idli is made in a different kind of a pot. It's kind of like an earthen pot and the fact that it's topped with pori with a little bit of ghee and to be enjoyed with chutneys and I think that along with all of the accompaniments just make for such a fabulous flavor profile and also I just cannot stop talking about how soft it is. And before I knew it, I was done with more than half of the idli. I just have like the last two bites left. The texture is so soft. It's also much more flatter than a regular idli. And it's melt in your mouth level soft. This is probably the softest idli that I've had here during my stay in Coimbatore. One thing I really like is this red chutney. I don't think there's too much of tomato in it. Maybe a hint, but it's more garlic and probably red chilli. Such a good combination. So here we have another dish in the making and this is the ghee roast dosa. This is a ghee roast dosa and it is smaller than other ghee roast dosas but I don't know whether my camera is doing justice to the glaze on it. It's gonna be tasty anyway. Right now I have something known as Kunnugulu. I hope I'm pronouncing it correctly. This one is actually a very popular street side uh, snack. It's almost like a pakoda and it's popular in the Vijayawada and Andhra region. This is what I'm going to be trying. It's so crispy from outside and this is how it looks from inside. Crispy goodness is one of those things that you can just go on munching. In terms of taste, I feel like very similar to like an idli or a dosa batter because you can feel that same fermentation kind of taste. It's like a slightly more light but a crispier version of a fried idli. Other local specialities that I found here are upma. So this is one with a little bit of masala and stuff. This is one with a little bit of veggies. Then this here is pongal and this here is vadai. So that was one extremely indulging and really heavy breakfast. After a long time, I actually got to sit, wake up late actually and then head to breakfast and sit down and enjoy it. Because other times, whenever I'm traveling and filming, it's a very, very rush process. So now that I'm done with all of that, I still need to rush a little bit right now. So I'm I'm just packing my cabin bag. I wanted to show you guys this bag because this is one of my recent buys from Amazon. By the way, this part of the video is absolutely not sponsored. This was gifted to me by my husband and it turned out so useful. So since a long time, I was looking for a backpack actually with a removable trolley handle and with wheels because with all of my travels, the amount of stuff that I'm carrying on my back becomes a bit much. So with this, I can convert it to a backpack or a trolley depending on how I like to use it at the time. It is expensive. I'm not gonna lie. I recently bought suitcases, which was a set of three whole suitcases for about 6,000 and this cost almost three and a half thousand, but it's absolutely worth it. You get colors in this, but I feel like this one is one of the best ones, beige and brown. So this is like the main compartment which holds all of the stuff. Here there's like a little secret zipper which can be zipped up to conceal the trolley. And this is a slot for the laptop. And here down is usually my camera. And then I have this pouch and I've actually put everything in a transparent pouch because otherwise security check is a nightmare. It's almost like the entire bag is getting empty because this is filled with mostly just electronics and when I have things in a pouch like this or in like separate pouches, it's just easier to pick out the pouch, put it in the security tray and let it go through the checking and then pick up that pouch and fill this bag up. I have this little toiletries pouch which also goes inside and that pouch is actually something that I have with me even in my handbag mostly and then I put this in. Bag actually doesn't have 
have too many compartments, but it's got a lot of like good vertical space to be able to hold all of this stuff. This is my hair dryer. This doesn't go in the check-in, so it's in this carry-on. A lot of backpacks, even my older backpack actually had a USB plug here. So this can be connected to anything and the output can be connected here. So you have a charging setup as well. There's actually one more pouch here, which is already filled up with my shades and stuff. And here we have like a little secret pouch. So this is a little bit more thinner. So sleeker stuff can fit in. And this one is a holder which can actually be extended. So if you have a bit of a bottle, then you can use this stretchy side or it can be shut. So right now I'm gonna show you guys how I convert this to a backpack. Put the trolley handle in, conceal it, open this zip behind, get the handles out. This is as easy as it is. The wheels don't really hit the body too much, so it's quite comfortable, but it's even more comfortable when it's being dragged as a trolley. I'll leave a link for this in the description box below because this is something that is supremely useful for anybody who does a lot of travel. So there was one thing that I wanted to do in Coimbatore which didn't end up happening yesterday. So I managed to do it today right before I got to the airport. It was visiting A1 chips and buying muraku, banana chips, jackfruit chips. Uh, my colleague also ended up buying achapam. I didn't buy that. But this was a shop that was recommended to me by many people and I was so glad I was able to visit. There's no tasting and all here so you have to go see and buy. The variety of muraku, banana chip was massive. Right from chilli to plain salted to ones with pepper, different different types. Even the prices are pretty good. So that is what all I bought. Check-in and all was done smoothly. And now I'm waiting for my flight. I'm flying back with Sara. The one reason I really like flying with Tara is that there is a meal on the flight mostly and it's just a little bit more comfortable than an Indigo or even AirAsia for that matter. I had such a good time in Coimbatore. I hope you guys enjoyed this vlog. If you did, then let me know so I can film more such content for you guys. Share it with your friends and family who are traveling here and don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more and I will see you in my next video. Bye!